Howdy everybody, my name is Keith Warren and on today's Deer and Wildlife Stories, we're gonna be showing you some deer that are gonna blow your mind. Everybody in the deer business is talking about this place. It's called Divine Genetics. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. So it's the last week of August, and this is the second time I've been out here to Divine Genetics. Now, I want to I want to tell you, as we've been traveling around the country as much as we have been, people have been asking me, you going to go back to Divine Genetics? You going to go back to Divine Genetics? It's like, absolutely. They said, you're not going to believe it, because everybody in the country is talking about Divine Genetics, and specifically about how big the yearlings are now at Divine Genetics. I'm Cole Wolf, owner of Divine Genetics. We're located right outside of Belton, Texas. We've been deer farming for nine years. We have 23 acres of pens here, and uh, we have roughly 400 deer. This is the second year that we've had uh, Keith Warren come out and video the deer and come see us, and uh, we're super excited to have him come back and uh, look forward to many years. Okay, so last year we came out here to Divine Genetics, and uh, we wound up, we showed you a whole bunch of stellar deer. I mean, really good deer. It was our first time to actually ever visit out here and me to spend some time with Cole. And so uh, he showed us a lot of really good bucks, but he showed us one that was a standout that everybody in the Texas deer industry was talking about and is still talking about that we're gonna show him to you now. This deer right here is named Solid Gold. And when you take a look at him, I mean, <laughs> is he not beautiful? God, <laughs> look at him. But uh, I want you to pay attention. Look, look at him now. And I wanna go back, I wanna show some video from last year. I wanna show what Solid Gold looked like at two years old. And so when we put these side by side, you can see yeah, the similarities, but you can also see the differences. And uh, Solid Gold is definitely cleaned up. I mean, it's beautiful. Is that uh, kind of a plan coming together for you? I think it's just uh, worked out perfectly. I mean, last year he had a big open frame on him, uh, was scoring way more than he does this year. But this year he still got that big open frame, but he really cleaned up. And I love the, the way he looks this year. I think he has the whole package. Yeah, he's got the whole package. And in here with these other guys, I mean, he just stands head and shoulders above most of them. So what are they, the other guys in here too? No, those are all yearlings. Wow. Cole, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I've been looking forward to coming here now since since we left last year. But uh, I, I was so impressed with the deer last year. Looking at him, I said, for a guy that hadn't been deer breeding long, I mean, this guy's got it going on. He is quiet. He doesn't he doesn't talk a lot. That's the thing I would tell people about you. I said, watch out for cold because, you know, he doesn't talk a lot, but he thinks a lot. He's thinking about the next pedigree, the next solid gold he's going to build. And he's got a whole deer farm full of giants, and we're going to show them to you on today's show. So tell me about some of these other yearlings. Well, the one yearling right there, uh, his name is Benji. He's got a pretty unique story. Uh, he uh, was the first fawn last year, and mother just, uh, she gave us quadruplets, and uh, all of them buck fawns, and we she couldn't take care of them all, and uh, so we had to pull the one, and Benjamin that's been working here with me since day one, uh, he's feeding and checking deer. He uh, came in the pen, and picked that fawn up and he named him little Benji and he's not so little now. No, I mean, look at little Benji. I mean, he is beautiful. And you know, that's, that's something I wanna, I wanna uh, address. Deer farms that have an operation like Cole does here at Divine Genetics, uh, Cole can't do it alone. He's got a, he's got a team of people out here and, and Benjamin is a, is a key member of the team. I mean, without Benjamin, I don't know what you'd do. I mean, that guy is, he's busy glassing the deer every single morning. He's in the pens all day long, making sure these deer look right, they're taken care of right. And if, if there is a deer off, 
out here and what we're talking about off doesn't act right i mean benjamin is going to actually be able to find it and going to notify cole they're going to figure out a game plan and get him right right quick but benjamin is uh he's certainly a huge asset for you oh he's a great uh great uh asset here and he you know without him uh we wouldn't be divine genetics and we've got a a great team of other people here and without a team i mean we wouldn't be where we're at uh everybody does their job uh you know each body is out checking deer and looking and and more eyes on the deer just means that we uh we don't miss things deer and wildlife stories is brought to you by record rack deer and elk feeds uvc power sports the north american deer farmers association advanced deer genetics new dart divine genetics the North American Deer Registry, Protect the Harvest, Headgear LLC, Southwest Fabricators, High Roller Whitetail's Big Buck Draft and Premier Deer Auction, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, this is from a viewer by the name of Derek. It's off of our Facebook page. It says, help me understand the hysteria about CWD. Why does every state handle the issue differently? It seems to me that if CWD is really such a bad issue, then there would be consistency in regards to how all states manage it. I agree, Darren. Uh, for whatever reason, every state manages differently for chronic wasting disease. Where Oklahoma at the time and Kansas, they don't test for it at all. Meanwhile, virtually every other state tests for it. The reaction to the to a positive case of CWD is what everybody's bothered by the most. Some states just kind of blow it off and don't do much where other states come in and want to kill everything off. So CWD is a big issue because people are making it a big issue. It'd be nice if it was just consistent across the board. Thanks for the question. If y'all have a question for me, you can get a hold of me on my website. Just hit the connect with Keith tab or shoot a question to me on Facebook. We're gonna, we're gonna show you on today's show some beautiful giant deer. And uh, they've been grown by a guy that has a vision in the deer farming industry and a knack for being able to build pedigrees off, of, off these paper and off the past performance of deer that are uh, actually producing some beautiful deer on this farm. And I can tell across the board, your deer are prettier this year than they were last year. Well, thank you. I mean, they really are. The very first thing, it's like, gosh, they're prettier. What did you do? Well, we've been looking, you know, to the future and trying to uh, build our program to to each year enhance the frame and tine length and width and and it's finally coming around you know it takes time and and as the years progress I mean we've gotten a little better each year and and that's the direction we're moving each year get better that's what we're trying for if you're a deer breeder or you're a, a guy that wants to get in the deer breeding business you're interested in deer breeding and you're in the central Texas area I want you to write down Cole's number and I want you to call him because Cole will be able to help you out and steer you in the right direction. Give him a phone number. My number is 254-541-4637. Folks, let, let me tell you, they've got another deer in here in another pen by the name of Outcast. And Outcast is a two-year-old. And you're not gonna believe this two-year-old. You're not gonna believe any of these deer. So let's go see Outcast right now. Let's check him out. All right, so two-year-olds uh, sitting here. I think that guy right there is a stud daddy. What's his name? He's Outcast. <laughs> Tell me about him. Well, he's a big two-year-old that we have here. Uh, he's a maximum danger over Express over Heather. Heather being a super doing herself. She's a on the bottom side. She's 86C, which is Gladiator's mom. So we really like the the pedigree that he has and, and the look and the frame that this buck has, I guess. So last year, I know when we came out here, we wound up, we filmed a, a pen of yearling bucks. I mean, uh, there were, I don't know, 40 of them or 50, or maybe more than that, because in that big pen back there. But, uh, so was he in that pen? He was in that pen. And, and so what is amazing to me is that last year, I mean, I, I didn't, he didn't stand out. I mean, as a yearling, he did not stand out. I mean, they, there were so many good yearlings in there. It's like, eh, okay. And now all of a sudden he blew up. So explain to everybody the process about trying to predict who's gonna blow up between one and two and how much some of them do blow up. <laughs> well, that's a hard question. Uh, between one and two, I mean, the deer that's the smallest could be your biggest at two. It's based on, you know, pedigrees we go by. 
we try to you know figure out what's going to be the best but at the end of the day you know a deer that is good and healthy and eats good at one could be just your average yearling and at two could be your stud well we've seen that over and over again in the industry that uh, jump between one and two is phenomenal and sometimes between two and three but typically between one and two is when you just stand back and go whoa that knothead just grew up into into the man and so okay his name is outcast and uh, he is beautiful but there's a bunch of other great looking deer in here now the other ones that are out here then are you going to sell any of them to be released on some of these ranches there will be some of them sold to other ranches yes sir if somebody wants to get a hold of you give them a telephone number they can reach me at 254-541-4637 well, these are some really, really good two-year-olds. And I mean, Outcast is certainly a standout and he's got my kind of look. But uh, speaking of look, what I want to do, um, a deer that everybody is looking at in the Texas deer industry and uh, everybody's talking about him and we're fixing to show him to you. His name is Justify. Let's go see Justify. Let's go check him out. <laughs> Closed captioning for Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by G2 Ranch where quality is our commitment. Brought to you by American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Just shut up and hunt. Hey y'all, I'm Timmy Edwin. I'm president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club and I like to fish too. I like to fish in this here little pond because they just got finished dumping a giant truckload of fish in here. They put in your black bass, they put in your white bass, your big mouse, your small mouse. <laughs> I, I'm up to my crappy in bass, if you know what I mean. Boo! Hey! Hey, Timmy, I got a question. They just dumped a big truckload of fish in here and these fish can't go anywhere. That's true. Okay, so I'm just wondering, is that fair chase fishing? I don't know, Keith, what is fair chase fishing? I don't know, what's fair chase hunting? I mean, as president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club, you ought to know. I don't know, I yeah. never thought about it. You know what, my advice is until you figure out what the definition of fair chase hunting is, just shut up and hunt. And fish. And fish, and folks, if you don't know what the definition of fair chase hunting is, you know what, you're not alone. We'd love to hear from you, and on all your social media posts, make sure and use the hashtag, just shut up and hunt. I'm going to leave it with you here. I got one! Okay, good! What is your definition of fair chase hunting? Let us know using the hashtag just shut up and hunt. The first impression that I get arriving out at Divine Genetics is that the deer are cleaner than they were last year. They, they don't have as much going on. They still have some trash kickers and stickers and stuff, but they're cleaner than they were last year and they got bigger, more open frames. So. Everybody's talking about this one buck named Justify, and I can't wait to see Justify. All right, so before we show you this pen of yearlings, uh, we just showed you Outcast. I mean, an unbelievable two-year-old. And uh, I, I just want to start out by warning you here that out of all the yearlings I've seen, this one right here is to me the deepest pedigree and the best deer that I have seen from my look. So take a look at him. His name is Justify. And as you look at Justify, I mean, I want you to know something, that, that at the Deer Breeders Corporation, the annual convention at DBC, everybody over there is talking about Justify. I mean, there's a lot of big deer on the market. There's no doubt. I mean, think about that. In today's world where we've got all this great semen to go around and people are, are, are doing the embryo program and there's a lot of great deer, but that deer right there, Justify, stands out. So. Tell everybody about him. What's his pedigree and tell about him? Well, Justify, he's a yearling that we've been uh, dreaming about for years uh, on paper. Uh, his, his pedigree is Triple Crown over Express, over Hardcore, over Gladiator, over Tasha. That pedigree, I mean, it's one of a kind. It takes many, many years and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make that happen. And it takes great animal husbandry, too. I mean, just because you have the right blood and you put the deer on the ground doesn't mean that he's gonna live. That's absolutely and right. So as a, as a deer breeder, we've gotta work on our animal husbandry. And, I, and I, I look at this and go, how long have you been doing this, eight years now? Nine years now. Nine years, and so you, he is relatively a new deer breeder, and to be able to produce a deer like that. Now, 
let's let's address this. I mean, we're gonna show you all these other yearlings right here while we go over this. I want to talk about it. Breeding strategies. Breeding strategies. I mean, it takes you're looking at paper. Okay, we've got the GMS system. We can look at these pedigrees and we can we can try to strategize and say we're gonna put this deer over this deer and what does it look like? Okay, and then if we do that, we can put that deer over this deer and this deer. What does it look like? Isn't that what you're doing? Oh yes, we go through and I build future pedigrees. I go through and see how this will look and what I feel like it will do to enhance the deer, make it prettier, cleaner. I mean, I, I, I dream of deer day and night. I mean, other people dream of uh, race cars or airplanes or fishing, and I love fishing, but uh, Cole Wolf dreams of building great big deer. And Justify is just another example, but these other yearlings in here too are unbelievable. When you take a look at them, and we're gonna go in a minute and take a look at another pin of yearlings, but this really is amazing. I mean, so if, uh, and I know Justify, I guess he's not for sale. I mean, no, sir. But, but, but that deer right there, he literally, if, if, uh, if he throws well, he could be worth easily over a million dollars. Uh, he's one of a kind and we're gonna breed him, you know, to some of our best and I think a few other people are going to also. So if somebody wants information about some semen, not just on Justify, but you know, we've got all these other great deer that we've looked at today and give them a telephone number they can call. You can reach me at 254-541-4637. And the thing is about Divine Genetics, uh, it, it's location, it's real centrally located. You could fly in Austin Airport and be in here in less than an hour for sure. And if somebody wants to book a farm tour to come out here and to see your deer, then what is the best time of year for them to do that? Uh, July and August, uh, we've got all the fawns on the ground, bucks are growing out, uh, you know, they're almost finished like now they're done. Uh, best time to come out and check out basically the, the whole farm. So when somebody buys a deer from you, I'm assuming they're all in North American Deer Registry. Yes. Okay. And what the North American Deer Registry is, it is the, what I like to say, the North American Deer Registry is the holy grail for a serious deer breeder. And the reason why is because we talk about pedigree and paper. That's where all the records are kept. And uh, speaking of uh, records, I want to go see uh, some other yearling bucks right now because I know uh, out of this pen, there's going to be other bucks that blow up and there's going to be other bucks blow up in your other yearling pen. So let's go take a look at them right now. Let's go check them out. If you're ready to get started in deer farming, go to DeerAndWildlifeStories.com and click the Get Started Deer Farming tab. Okay, Cole, so, I mean, I'm looking at these deer and going, are they really yearlings? Yes, sir. I mean, see, what, what blows my mind, look at him. He just can't, yes, sir. I mean, quiet. He looks at him, I'm going, <laughs> look at these deer, folks. Um, you know, I have been uh, at deer farms this year from Michigan to Pennsylvania to Florida to all over Texas, and you win on yearlings, hand down. Look at this, folks. I mean, it, it, this is really, Amazing. I mean, and the, and the biggest thing that I've noticed here, as we've gone to all the pens and we've seen Solid Gold or Outcast or even Justify, and Justify is a giant yearling, clearly. Uh, the one thing that has been consistent through this entire day for me is that the deer cleaned up this year. They cleaned up a lot. So address that if you would again. Why is that? Why did the deer clean up? I mean, even Solid Gold, I would have put money on it that he was going to get, you know, more non-typical. What happened? What'd you do? Well, that's a hard question, but I think just the years of breeding and looking forward and trying to breed for a bigger frame, typical frame, and we're finally, you know, seeing the results. Well, as a farmer, uh, there's different crops that you can grow that uh, mature quickly. And what we try to do in the deer farming world, clearly, is get a, get a crop that's going to grow big quickly. And you, you got it down, but the deal is it takes time. I mean, it, it, and, and, and I guess that's the one big piece of advice that, that I would give deer breeders is once you come up with a strategy, stick with it. I mean, there's a lot of big deer out here. I mean, Cole would like to sell you semen out of any of his deer. He'd like to sell you a big old deer, but whatever you're doing, stick with it long enough to know whether it's working or it's not working. If it's not working, then call somebody like Cole Wolf. So if they want to get a hold of you, Cole, give them a telephone number. You can reach me at 254 541-4637. Okay, now, that deer right there, who is he out of? He looks like a horsepower. 
that's a big uh, horsepower sun right there. That's a uh, it's horsepower over shadow over express over monarch. Oh my goodness gracious! You know it's uh, amazing how you start listening to all those pedigrees and they all kind of go back to the same tree. You know, I mean yes, all sir. of them. And so when you start stacking them, it's no wonder. What about that big deer right there? Who's he out of? Well, we've got a horsepower over walking queen in here. Uh, walking queen is Hammer Down's mom. It's, uh, you know, proven genetics for the last few years and you can really see the res results there. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just amazed. And so, uh, let me ask you this, and uh, as far as if somebody wants to come out here and buy a yearling buck, uh, compared to say buying a, a three-year-old buck, how do you price them? That's hard to do. I mean, we, we will price some yearlings uh, each year, but it's, uh, it's normally uh, higher than because you're just waiting to see what they really do it to. Uh, but we are open to making deals and, and we will sell some each year, a few here and there. Yeah, so as you look out here and you see these yearlings and you see that guy and that guy and that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy that are outstanding, there's some in there that just don't stand out, don't count them out of the game yet. No. And, and because they're stacked so deep and so long that Somebody in this pen could be the next solid gold next year, absolutely. So again, if you all want more information on coming out here to Divine Genetics, all you need to do is get a hold of Cole Wolf. We'll have a direct link off of our website to their website, or you can give him a call anytime. He'll be happy to show you around. You've been watching Deer and Wildlife Stories, and my name is Keith Warren.